Let's do a few more problems related to our introduction to trigonometry here. <clears throat> now that you've done one day of this, this should be more familiar, but we're going to start using our calculator a little bit more to get the ratios. Obviously, you've used your calculator in the problem so far, but instead of referring to the table now from your packet, we're going to use our calculator because our calculator has stored all of this information on it. So remember our SOHCAHTOA rules, right? So sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So example one says use your calculator to find angle A if the tangent of angle A is equal to 0.176. So you guys did a problem just like this in class yesterday and in the previous notes. But what we're going to do here is to think about, all right, if tangent of A is 0.176, how can we just go right to our calculator to figure this out? So on your calculator, you want to make sure, as I mentioned in class, that your calculator is in degree mode. So if you have a graphing calculator, you might have switched this all over when we were in class. But uh, I'm going to bring out the graphing calculator over here. So the graphing calculator has degree mode. If you go into the mode right here, on at least the Texas Instruments TI ones that we have in class, mode button is right here. And if you click on that button, you'll get into a screen that looks like this over here, you'll get a screen that looks like this, and you want to make sure that your calculator has been set to degree mode. It'll default to radian mode, so you just click down to that, click over, make sure you enter degree mode so it stays there, and then it should be in degree mode unless you've reset your memory or reset your defaults. So it'll stay in degree mode. Radians are another measure of an angle that you'll learn about in coming math courses, but not this year. So you want to make sure it's in degree mode. If it's not, you're going to start getting some really crazy answers, and you'll probably figure out that they're wrong answers, and it's probably because you're in radian mode instead of degree mode. If you have one of these scientific calculators, usually it's going to already be in degree mode. Most of the time, those are defaulting to degree mode. But if I press this button right here, that will switch it to radians, which I don't want. So you want it to be in degree mode. So somewhere on your calculator, there is a button where you can make sure it's in degree mode. Some of the calculators might have a little D circled up on the screen here, which probably means it's in degree mode. So just check that on your calculator because it has to be in degree mode. All right, once we're in degree mode, now we can solve this. So we have the tangent of A is equal to 0.176. So in other words, what angle has a tangent of 0.176? Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what angle is the opposite over adjacent going to turn out to be 0.176? So now we can use our calculator to figure that out. So if we actually go to the calculator, and what you do is, on most calculators, you're going to hit this, the shift button or the second button. Notice when I hit that button, now I've got this little inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. Looks like a little exponent of negative 1 next to each one of these. So I want to click, for this one, the inverse tangent. So I click that inverse tangent of, well, actually, on this one, I think I actually have to do 0.176 first. 0.176 inverse tangent. And it tells me that my degree amount is about 9.98 degrees. Okay? Same thing is true on a graphing calculator. If you pull out the graphing calculator, you'll have, let's see, where is my graphing calculator? I've lost it over on the side here. There we go. Let's see that, that one. I'm sorry, hold on just a second here while I get my graphing calculator back into the picture. All right, so graphing calculator. To make sure that you got the inverse tangent, you're going to have this little, the tangent button. Notice above the tangent button is the little tangent to the negative 1. So you're going to hit the second button and then the tangent button to get that tan negative 1 to come up. And then we're going to use that to solve. Okay, so hopefully you followed that. But in the end, here's how it works. So the angle A is going to be the inverse tangent of 0.176.
So notice I did that already on the calculator on the screen a moment ago, and I got about 9.98 degrees. So about 10 degrees is my answer. So it's basically the way of looking at your table, but the table is already stored on the calculator for you. So this would be the work that I would want to see for a problem like that now. You just show that angle A is the inverse tangent of 0.176. In other words, which angle has a tangent of 0.176? A 9.98 degree angle has a tangent of 0.176. All right. So example two, find the measure of angles X and Y. Well, let's start with, actually, find the angles X and Z. Let's start with Z. Why not? Let's start with Z instead of X. So here's angle Z. And if I want to know the degree of angle Z, I want to think about the two sides that I'm given. So with angle Z, what are those two sides? That's right. This one is the adjacent side, and this one would be the hypotenuse related to angle Z. We don't actually know the opposite side, so we're just using the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So which ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse? That's right, cosine does. So that's like our first step of our problem here is just say, okay, the ratio cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means that the cosine of angle Z is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And so now all I have to do with my calculator is do angle Z is the inverse cosine of 6 tenths. So you can just punch that into your calculator. You could change it, the 6 tenths to a decimal of 0.6. So you could have like inverse cosine of 0.6, which is the same thing. But if you punch that into your calculator, the inverse cosine of 6 tenths ends up being, let's see, angle Z ends up being 53.1 degrees. Okay? So angle Z is 53.1 degrees. And so now we have Z. Now, do we have to use trigonometry to get angle X? And the answer to that is, well, we could, but we don't have to, because now we know we have a 90 degree angle and we have a 53.1 degree angle. So angle X is just going to be 180 degrees minus 53.1 minus 90. So the angle that is left for X would be 36.9 degrees. Okay, so... I'm going to just label these here. So this is angle Z, and this was angle X right here. All right, so we didn't have to reference the table from our packet anymore. We could just use our calculator, punch in inverse cosine of 6 tenths. And actually, you know, I could maybe on the next one I'll actually bring that in. And then I can show it to you now. So, All right, so there's our calculator. So again, 6 tenths. 0.6 was the ratio, and I wanted to do the inverse cosine of that one. And notice when I type that in, I get that angle of 53.1 degrees. Okay, example three, find the length of side x. So there's our angle that we're using, and then we have to think about what are the 9 and the x related to that angle. Well, the 9 is the hypotenuse. Now, side x is directly across from the angle, so that means that's the opposite side. The adjacent side would be the one on top, but we're not going to use that because we have the other two sides that we are focused on. So opposite and hypotenuse, what ratio are we using? That's right, we're using sine. So SOH is our little acronym to help us remember that the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 76 degrees is equal to Opposite, which is the x, over hypotenuse, which is the 9. Now, here's what we're going to do here. We're going to kind of speed this up a little bit and just go right into our algebra right away. Instead of getting the sine of 76 right on our calculator, let's just get x by itself by multiplying both sides by 9. So, in other words, x is going to be equal to 9 times the sine of 76. So let's just punch that into our calculator all at once. It speeds our process up a little bit here. So 9 times the sine of 76 
I'll use my other calculator that I have up here. All right, so 9 times the sine of 76. So 76, on this calculator, I have to actually type in 76 first. If you're using the graphing calculator, you'd hit the sine button first. But I'm going to now hit the sine button. So there's the sine of 76. And I'm going to multiply that times 9. And I get about 8.7. So the sine, 9 times the sine of 76, if you punch that in, you should get about 8.7. Okay? So our answer for x is about 8.7 centimeters. So we're sort of speeding up our process now. Instead of punching it in, getting the decimal for it, we're just kind of going right from the sine 76, just leaving it as sine 76 until the very end of the problem, punching in 9 times sine 76, and you get about 8.7.